What about narcissists? Do they actually cry or is it just manipulation? And if you're crying, what does that actually mean to a narcissist? How do they actually process it? How do they actually view that? Well, today we're going to dive into two main things, and it's the idea of narcissists crying, and it's the idea of how they respond when you're crying, what they're actually thinking, how they're actually processing it. So stick around. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And we do it on all different platforms. We drop small nuggets of truth every single day on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. We also have the podcast, which is on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, all under Raw Motivations. So if you don't like or subscribe on any of those, feel free to check them out. Sometimes we go live different times. Sometimes we have different things offered, different places. So we'd love to be able to interact with you there. As you're getting out of a narcissistic relationship, or as you're trying to figure out what's going on in a narcissistic relationship, you need people around to support you. This is one of the reasons why we've built the NARC app community. It stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It's a community of like-minded people to help you heal, grow, and change. And as a result, you can log in, you can take courses, you can take challenges, you can go in and you can record your no contact, you can track your truth, you can go in there and you can be able to interact with other people to get advice, to get encouragement, to ask questions, to be able to just have support as you're going through some of the crazy making. We have every single day, every single week, we have weekly lives. We have monthly coaching calls. We have a lot of different things that are going into the app and developing even more to help you from that growth mindset to continue through that healing journey because it is a journey. It's not a destination. It's a mindset as we continue moving forward. So feel free to check that out. It's at narcapp, N-A-R-C-A-P-P.com, narcapp.com. If you want to interact with me sometime, or if you want to talk through a couple things as far as breaking the trauma bond, working through the rumination, and setting up healthy boundaries, go to rawmotivations.com, click on one-on-ones. We'll love to be able to have a time with you to be able to help with that. If you want to hear from the wife, my wife, her perspective about our life, about narcissism, about different things that we've gone through or struggled with, then check out our podcast. Our first season now of Trauma, Drama, and Life. It's on Apple Podcasts. Check that out, Trauma, Drama, and Life, where myself and Kayla Taylor walk through different things that we've gone through, different issues, different problems. You get to hear our perspective and some a little bit of our life as well. So check that out. Last off, if you haven't had a chance to be able to see the journal, From Fantasy to Reality, check that out. It's on Amazon.com, and it also has over 100 prompts in there to be able to work through the crazy making of are you believing a false narrative or are you actually believing the truth? So diving in today, do narcissists cry or is it just manipulation? Like, what's it actually look like? Well, if you've heard some of the stuff about my story, if you've heard some of the things that like I've gone through or that I've processed, growing up, I didn't cry. It wasn't something that was in my life. It wasn't something that I engaged with, that I interacted with. It didn't really happen. Me actually crying or tearing up was not even a thought. It didn't really interact that way. My emotions didn't connect the same way, like any type of empathy, any type of feelings. I just didn't cry. So much so that oftentimes it would be kind of like a joke of like, whoa, like he might be tearing up. Let's write this down because it wasn't something that was normal for me to engage with. Sometimes I would engage with it, but it would be alone with no one else around because I didn't know how to handle different emotions, different feelings. So as a result, tried to hide it. For me, I never really went through the aspect of trying to fake it. Not like tears, not like crying, like, oh my gosh, I'm so awful, so so sorry, like things like that. I didn't really try to fake it. As a whole, honestly, I didn't really care. I didn't really care to fake it. I didn't really care to exude that much effort to appear like I was crying for someone else's benefit or someone else's desire. So didn't really do that. Diving into day, there's two main things. Narcissists do cry for two different reasons and narcissists view you crying in two different ways. So when we talk about narcissists crying, I think they do it for two different reasons. The first one is manipulation. A lot of times we'll see narcissists cry to prey on your empathy and to get you to do something or to get you to help them. A huge aspect of preying on your empathy is done sometimes early on in the relationship with fake vulnerability, telling telling you stuff about their past that might be real, but is just there to be able to put out there so that you think that there's actually empathy there. When in reality, they're unwilling to be vulnerable about what they're feeling and thinking now. When we talk about preying on their empathy, a lot of times narcissists will come across, especially vulnerable or like covert narcissists, will come across as being broken 
and that you need to fix them. And as a result, they prey on your empathy and being like, oh, let me help them. Let me get them better. And as a result, they've got you locked in. Oftentimes you start thinking like maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll start to get better. Maybe they'll come back. Like all these different things. And in the day, all it is is another way to be able to control you and to manipulate you. You see, when we're talking about like preying on another person, we're talking about empathy. There's an aspect that the narcissist is going to come across and pretend to be weak. Of let me cry, let me be sad, let me all this kind of stuff to pretend to be weak. And you think, why would that make sense? It wouldn't make sense if they're all about control. Why would they come across as being weak? Well, in doing so, it manipulates you into helping them, which automatically establishes a little bit of a power dominance. Of like, hey, if I cry and you respond how I want you to respond, then I'm going to do it to get what I want. So in a way, it goes back to the aspect of still control, even though in the moment it might look weak. Okay. Second thing, narcissists do cry. A lot of times we we'll go back to the aspect of shame. Guilt and shame that we don't want to hold out, that we don't want to talk about, that we don't want to expose because that's what's inside. The guilt and the shame that we want to be honest about. And you see this every once in a while with a narcissistic collapse. Now, a lot of times you're not going to see this. There's not a ton of narcissistic collapses that happen because a lot of times their defense mechanisms are already so high up. It's not really going to do anything. When we're talking about the actual, like, why they would get to a place of actually collapse or why they get to a place of actual, like, shame and crying would be being left alone with who they truly are. Because a lot of times narcissists can't stand who they are. They can't stand not being the best, not being special, not being different. They can't stand what is actually going on inside, the guilt and shame. And a lot of times that perpetuates their own shame because they'll start crying or being upset or have a collapse and then be viewed as themselves of like, wow, I'm really weak because I'm doing this, and so it continues. Again, narcissistic collapse, we don't see a lot about it, and there's not a lot of it that actually happen because a lot of times their defense mechanisms are so high and so high strong that it's not actually going to get through to be able to break them down. Now, when we're talking about narcissist crying, part of the reason why you don't see them cry a lot of times is because of how they view you when you cry. The first thing is narcissists view you crying a lot of times as manipulative. They do it a lot of times to manipulate you to prey on your empathy. So when you're actually crying, they're like, why are you trying to manipulate me? It doesn't work that way. That's the thought process. Oftentimes, they'll think that you're trying to make them care, that you're trying to manipulate them. You're trying to twist it around. And they're like, I don't care. So like, why does it matter? But oftentimes they'll try to twist it and make it around where it seems like you're manipulating me because you're trying to cry. I got this. I figure this out. Sometimes it's just the aspect they think you're manipulating them because you're giving more emotion than what they can process. So like for me, a lot of times like my wife would be crying, it'd be all these different types of things and I would struggle to be able to engage with any of it. So I'm like, I don't want that. Like one, I don't care that you're going through that. And then two, like I really like hate to be able to feel some of these emotions because I don't know what to do with them. I don't know how to process them. I don't know how to feel them because they're automatically coming back to me and like changing my mindset and like making me feel bad. And I don't want to feel bad. So I have to be able to push it back. A lot of times narcissists, when they see you cry, they think, oh, you're just trying to manipulate me. Second aspect of how narcissists view you when you're crying, it's just plain annoyance. Your tears to a narcissist are inconvenient. Your tears are a problem for the narcissist because you're not making their life happy by you crying. And you'd be like, that seems very self-centered. Welcome to narcissism. There's an aspect of when you get upset and you start crying that it comes across to them of like, why would you mess up my day? Why would you inconvenience me? Why would you do that to me? It's always back to the narcissist. So like, for instance, like my wife would start crying. It'd be like, oh, here we go again. And that like thought process, that mentality of like, I can't get this fixed because it was all about me. It was all about what I wanted and her crying wouldn't finish fast enough for me because I was impatient. Like I couldn't get to the end result of getting back to having a happy life, of getting back to not dealing with emotions and and those those icky things that I don't want to deal with, right? Like, so I have to be able to get away from it. So her crying was oftentimes an inconvenience and frustrating. See, the thing is, it wouldn't get fixed fast enough. Like, 
someone to be crying and the nurse is like, okay, like you should be done by now. You should be done by now. You're not done by now. Okay, forget you. And then they walk out. Then they rage. For me, there'd be times that I'd even try. I'd like reach out and be like, hey, it's okay. You know, but I'd only try for 30 seconds or a minute and it wouldn't fix the problem because I'm thinking like, okay, let me try to show something. I don't know what I'm showing, but let me try to show something so she feels better, but then it wouldn't get fixed instantly. So I'm like, well, what's the point of that? And then I'd rage or I'd get upset or I'd walk away or I'd leave, whatever it might be, because at that point, the tears are an inconvenience and I can't fix it fast enough so that I feel better about myself. Now, are you getting kind of like the theme here? It's all about the narcissist. It's all about going back to themselves. If you're with a person today that doesn't make space for you, doesn't make space for your feelings, for your emotions, for your tears, anything like that, you need to understand at the, at the core of it, they don't care and they don't respect you. And you need to be able to take that break and be like, okay, what is actually going on? Because a narcissist, when they see you cry, when they experience your emotions, they don't care. It's a big annoyance and it's a big inconvenience for them.